This year, I'm going to play one JRPG a month, and at the end of the year, I'll rate them from 1 to 12. Now, we're halfway through this Japanese journey. Well, we should have been last month, but I stumbled a bit. Last month was the first month I failed to complete a JRPG, so I really apologise for that, but I will be 12 by the end of the year. Now, I want this whole channel to be authentic to my gaming experience, and for me, that sometimes consists of me losing interest in games. Over the past few years, I've been trying to finish games that I want to finish. Before, I would try to push myself through no matter how much of a slog it is, but time is just too precious, so if I'm not having fun with a game, I'll stop playing it. Hi everyone, my name is Adzi, and welcome to my one JRPG a month on Trials of Mana. Don't forget to subscribe. Now, onto the video. So, as I was saying about this being true to my gaming experience, I got bored of this game and couldn't bring myself to finish it. I think I had about 6 hours left and I just, I just had to stop, but I'll give my thoughts on the game up until then. I don't think this game did anything too bad, but I think it was just a build up of the little things that ultimately ruined my experience. So we begin with the good. The art style is great. The world and characters are all really colourful and it was the reason that I bought the game to begin with. It reminds me of Dragon Quest or something similar, so that's a great compliment to get. The characters and enemy models really pop. Now, I think they pop because some of the texture work is a bit eh, meh. There are some rocks or buildings that look good, but others, it's like they just forgot to texture them. The animations in the cutscenes are a bit crap too. They look really stiff most of the time. A plus is that on the PS4, the game runs at 60 FPS, so that's pretty good, I guess. I was torn between getting this game on the PS4 or Switch, and I'm glad I didn't get it on the Switch because I'd imagine it looks pretty rough and it runs at 30 FPS. So, the textures were strike one for this game. You start the game with a choice of 9 characters, which you have to commend the game for. I think the villain changes depending on who you choose, which is also really cool. There's definitely plenty of replayability here, if you can stick with the game, which I couldn't. So I chose Hawkeye since I always played a rogue slash archer character. His voice acting is surprisingly good. Actually, the majority of the voice acting is good, but then there is some absolutely terrible voice acting. Guys, you lied! Said I could bring Carl back to life! The story is typical stuff. Find some elemental fairies that will help you save the world from impending doom. Nothing out of the ordinary here, but we all know why we play these games. Massive, massive relationships between the characters. This game doesn't have this. There was very little party interaction, and when it did happen, I just didn't care about it. My two party members were this big haired warrior type character and this healer girl. I have never regretted my party choice more in a game. I thought Charlotte was some race of small humans, but no, no, no. She's a child that speaks in this baby voice and pronounces all of our R's as W's. I cringed every single time she spoke and it genuinely made me really uncomfortable. <laughs> this is strike two for the game. Now, the gameplay. Before I say anything about this, I understand that this is a remake of an already pretty basic SNES game, so I wasn't expecting too much here. It's a pretty decent hack and slash game. At the start it felt good. I was enjoying my time with the combat, but after a few hours it became very boring. Just mash square and the odd triangle every now and again. And this was before I upgraded my character classes. When this happened around level 18, the combat felt fresh again. I could spec my characters in a way that I wanted, and I had a few action skills to use in combat. For a couple of hours after this, the combat was actually really fun. I was thinking how I would talk about how the game done a full 180, going from a basic hack and slash to something with a bit more depth, but it just didn't last too long. Exploring the world offered little to no reward. A big problem I had with the game was that chests never had weapons or armors in them, only money and consumables. Once I realised this, which admittedly was pretty late, I didn't feel compelled to explore the areas anymore. The game just kind of fell apart. I found myself just blitzing through the story, avoiding combat and skipping cutscenes. And when I began skipping cutscenes, I realised that the game was done for me. I just didn't care about it anymore. It was just a build up of unrewarding exploration, uninteresting story and characters, and samey combat that led me to the title of this video. Trials of Meh Meh. That's it, summed up. It's just a meh game. As I said, I want this channel to be true to my gaming experience. And with that means if a game isn't gripping me, then I just won't finish it. So by default, this game is number 12 on the spot for this series. I was actually excited for playing this game, but it just wasn't for me. So if you're looking for a bang average action RPG, then this could be for you. It's not a terrible game by any means, so it definitely could appeal to some people. 
I have played the original Secret of Mana and Children of Mana on the DS, and they have a really nice charm to them that I think gets lost when translating from 2D to 3D. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of the game if you have played it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all on the next video.